So hi guys, um, my name is Aman Seni and I'm a software developer and trainer as well in big data Hadoop technologies together with Apache Spark and data science, uh, machine learning, artificial intelligence and neural networks. Uh, I do have uh, experience over around eight, to eight years in big data and all over it is around 10 years. I am IBM certified. I have done my BCA from Guru Gobind Singh in the first university, New Delhi. My previous company was uh, GKM Tech and Danik Bhaskar, now working for IBM and KVCH. Okay, so if, uh, so let's start today's session with big data and Hadoop. So basically, I told you about myself that this is my introduction. And these are the agenda we are going to cover. The training will be provided from Kasho training in big data. I will tell you about the course, introduction to big data, and I'll show you the practical implementation that how Hadoop process the data within seconds. What are the technologies and what are the algorithms which are working together to make this happen and how there are a lot number of companies are using big data and Hadoop. So providing services. Okay, so let's start the today's session and with big data and Hadoop. These are the topics that we are going to cover, like evolution of data, what is big data, big data is an opportunity, problems in causing opportunity, Hadoop is a solution, and Hadoop ecosystems. Okay, and uh, if I just talk about any one of you who is uh, going through this session, any one of you can work on big data, because there is no mandatory you have to be an IT or non-IT guy. Everyone can work in big data. Okay, whether you are from uh, marketing kind of stuff, if you are basically from uh, IT, you are a developer, you are an administrator, you are an analyst, or your guy of future, which is called data science, machine learning, AI, and neural networks. If you are from a uh, searching background, if you are from PHP, if you are from Android, iOS, any kind of guy can work in big data. So, and if I just talk about the pay scale, it is the highest paid uh, job in today's industry. Okay. So again, uh, the same topics that number one is evolution of data. So let's start, start the today's session with evolution of data. As you can see in the image, right, we do have telephones in our homes which are not generating any kind of data. They are generating some amount of data but can be manageable by old technologies. And if I just talk about the technological change, that changes as compared to telephones, now I do have mobile phones, right? When we do have mobile phones, we do install a lot number of applications like iOS application is there, Windows application is there, and Android applications, if I just talk about e-commerce website, portals kind of stuff, and if I just talk about games, and nowadays PUBG, right? We do use that application and it is generating huge amount of data. And if I just talk about the social media, Instagram, we do use Instagram, Twitter, LinkedIn, Snapchat, YouTube. We do generate a huge amount of data, right? And in our previous history, we do have a technology which is called RDBMS, which is only responsible for storing only structured data. And now the data type has been changed. We do have structured data, now we do have semi-structured and unstructured. And all of us are generating huge amount of unstructured data. If I just talk about Instagram, just suppose that I go on Instagram and I search for a friend like uh, a David. I do have a friend whose name is David. I search for him. All the things of searching, storage, his profile is going to be loaded within nanoseconds, right? So behind that, there's a technology. All the data have been stored, the filtration algorithm, data mining algorithm. There's a lot number of algorithms which are working together and we get the data within nanoseconds. But we have never thought about it that how they are storing our data, how they are processing our data, how they are analyzing our data within seconds. What are the technologies behind that? We never thought about it and we just keep on uploading the data on these kind of social services. And uh, if I just talk about the second example, which is called desktop, right? So in our history and as well as present, we do have laptops. We do carry laptops, right? Laptops or systems, which is having fixed memory. Like I do have a desktop whose memory is around one TB. I cannot store more than that data. So that is having a limitations. And now as compared to the desktop, now I do have a replacement of clouds. Everyone have heard about AWS, Azure, and uh, Dropbox, Drives, a lot number of clouds are there. Basically, we do use to upload our data and fetch the data by the help of a medium which is called internet. So basically we do have a huge cloud are available over here. So by the, we have to just pay some amount of services and we can get our data and we can maximize our limits. So that is done by the help of clouds. And the third example, which is called cars. Cars are generating some amount of data, but can be manageable by old technology like RDBMS. Right now there's a change. That changes as compared to cars. Now I do have smart cars and we do understand that smart cars. Elon Musk, the founder of uh, Tesla. So you have already heard about Tesla, which is generating huge amount of big data. And you have also heard about Google cars. They are generating huge amount of data because the reason behind that is satellites. So they are generating huge amount of data. And the type of data is unstructured and semi-structured. 
So that is the reason I want a new technology. Now coming to this next PPT, that is IoT. So we do understand that Internet of Things states that all the devices which are connected by the help of Internet, they are going to generate some data. And uh, if I just talk about the year 2020, it would be around 2020, it would be around 50 billion devices which are going to generate huge amount of data. And we need a technology to store the data and to process the data and to analyze the data. We do carry Apple Watch, right? It tells me the fluctuations of the all the steps that I have proceeded to, all the number of distance I have covered, my heartbeat, everything will be done by the help of Apple Watch. So they are calculating our data, real-time streaming data. They are processing the data. They are analyzing that data within nanoseconds. So what is the technology behind that? We have never thought about it. We are just keep on using the services. So this is called IoT. So IoT is generating huge amount of big data. The next one is social media. If I just talk about Instagram, we do use Instagram, right? We have never thought about it that approximately 17 lakh number of images are uploaded on Instagram within a single minute. That is big data on Instagram, right? And nowadays there's a top trending. Like so suppose that you go on Instagram and then again you search for a friend, his profile is gonna be load, all the comments, all the posts gonna be visible within nanoseconds. All the searching, storage, processing, analyzing, all the data set have been done within nanoseconds. And you have already seen through an application which is called TikTok. They are generating a huge amount of data nowadays. So that is Instagram. And the second one, which is called Facebook, approximately 41 lakh number of likes and 200 lakh number of photos are uploaded on Facebook within a single minute. That is called big data on Facebook. And we do use Facebook approximately four years back. The If I just talk about the news feed, right, we go on news feed and we check that there are only pictures and we do have a feature of like, comment and share. Now there's a change, That's, that changes as compared to photos. Now I do have videos more than that on images on news feed of Facebook. So that is a change. That is a change in type of data, right? So that is data that we got by the help of Facebook. And the third example, which is called Twitter. We do use Twitter a lot. 34 lakh number of tweets are done within a single minute on Twitter. And if I just talk about the fourth example, which is called emails, 24 lakh number of emails are generated within a single minute on Gmail, Yahoo Mail, Orkut, Outlook, etc., etc. So these are the services provided by emails. And if we just talk about the fifth example of big data, which is called YouTube. So that is the data that is generated filled. So approximately, if I just talk about a song on YouTube into in the year 2009 and 10 or 14, 13, just consider like 13. You can see that the maximum resolution is 480 pixel, right? And now there is a change as compared to that change is 480 pixel to 4K Ultra HD. And you are just glad to know that 300 hours of videos are uploaded within a single minute on YouTube. So we have never thought about it that how they are storing our data, 300 hours of videos within a single minute. So what are the technologies they are running? What are the technologies? What are the tools they are using for making this happen? So behind that, there is a lot number of technologies which are working together and they made it possible within nanoseconds. So what are the technologies they are using? They are using a new technology, a greedy technology because RDBMS have a limit in like if I just talk about RDBMS can only store structured data. And if I just talk about new type of data that is semi-structured and unstructured, it cannot. We have to use some third party softwares. Okay. And the maximum capacity of RDBMS is around 10 TB. We cannot store more than that data in RDBMS. And only it has to be only structured. And if I just talk about big data, big data is in the form of petabytes and zettabytes. Okay, so I need a new technology for storage as well as for process. So that is the reason I'm using a new technology. We all are using a new technology and all the persons have already heard about Hadoop. So Hadoop is a technology that can store your data, that can process your data, that can analyze your data, as well as you can do future operations, data science, artificial intelligence, machine learning, and neural networks by the help of Hadoop. So that is a big data that we have generated in social media. And uh, we, the social media is not the only factor which is generating a huge amount of data. We do have some other factors like banking and finance. If I just, you have already heard about Paytm, right? Paytm is generating a huge amount of data, Google Pay. So that is the data that is generated by the help of banking and finance. And media and entertainment, like you have already heard about uh, that uh, book my show, okay? And uh, iTunes, Spotify, Netflix, they all are generating a huge amount of big data. And if I just talk about the healthcare, 
like cancer treatment have been launched by the lot of companies which are working on cancer treatment that is generating huge amount and UHG and MetLife. So they are generating a huge amount of big data and they are working on their data sets. And we'll just stop at the fourth that is called education. Education generating huge amount of data by the help of like Udacity, Udemy, uh, Capital and Edureka and EDX and Baiju's. So basically they are generating huge amount of data in education sector and if I just talk about the government Aadhaar, we, we do no use Aadhaar so that is uh, big data from government and transportation, Ola, Uber, Tesla, Google Cars they all are generating huge amount of data insurance like basically MetLife and American Express they are generating huge amount of data banking policies, okay, SDFC, life insurance policy and all so they all are generating huge amount of data and if I just talk about the last one, which is called retail, like e-commerce website, like Walmart, eBay, Amazon, and um, Jabong, Mintra, Flipkart, Snapdeal. So they all are generating huge amount of data. And behind that, there is a lot of technologies that they are working on. So that is a big data because in our previous history, we do have a technology which is called RDBMS. Now I need a new change because my type of data also got changed and the size of the data also got changed. So that is evolution of data. Now next, what is big data? So you have gone through that a lot number of examples that if I just talk about some real life examples, I will tell you like uh, weather forecasting, stock exchange, airplanes, ships, they all are generating huge amount of big data. GPS tracking, satellites, drones, they all are generating huge amount of big data. Bank transactions, everywhere there is big data and big data. So I need that solution. So what do you understand by big data in real world? So basically big data is a term for collection of data sets so large and complex that it become difficult to process using on hand database system tools or traditional data processing applications. So that is called big data. Huge amount of data which is having a big in size which is very hard to store as well as process and we need a new technology because we cannot store big data in old technology like RDBMS. So that is the big data. Huge amount of data that we cannot store or process using old technologies. That is called big data in general terms. So there is a term in big data which is called five V's of big data that is important for the interview point of question for the, all the fresher students who are available here. So basically this is the one of the uh, important topic in learning big data. Number one is called volume. That means all the data that, uh, that came in these kind of categories you can call that data as big data. Number one is called volume. As you can see in the image, in the 2009, we don't have that much of devices which are generating data. And 10 and 11, we do have FM, right? There's a time phase that every individual want a phone at least which contains a FM at least. And 12 and 13 is a time phase for systems. Everyone wants a laptop or a desktop at 2012 and 13. And 14 is a time phase for Android phones, iOS phones, and systems. And 15 and 16 is a time phase for DSLR and cameras. And 17 and 18 is the current situation we all are living in. And 2019 and 20 will be the use of satellites. Satellites is going to play a huge role in big data because the Tesla cars is on test mode right now. And then they are going to be on road in 2020. So that means as the number of devices grow, they are going to generate some data that is called big data. That is volume in big data. And approximately if I just talk about the data capacity, it is around 4.4 zettabyte of data have been collected by the end of 2018. And if I just talk about 19 and 20, it would be around 44 zettabyte. So that means 10 times more. As compared to all, all the history, it is 4.4 zettabytes. And if I just talk about the upcoming two years, that is around 44 zettabytes. So that is change. I need a new technology for my future as well. So that is volume in big data. Number two is called variety. That means now data have variety. Data may have structured might be semi structured or unstructured i need a new technology for storing and processing that amount of data which is generated from different sources so that is variety in big data and you have already familiar that structured data which is in, which is used by the rdbms which is in the tableau kind of form that is called structured data rows and columns kind of stuff is structured data and semi structured data json xml csv thv and emails which follow somehow some pattern of structure and unstructured and unstructured data which is in the form of logs, audios, videos and images. The data that we generate by the help of social media nowadays for all the guys we are in the industry and using all the kind of services. So that is variety in big data. 
and the third v is called velocity velocity as in transfer rate of the data just suppose that i i use my mobile phone and i search for youtube i search a song on youtube like selena gomez i hit enter I, all his profile going to be load and his all the albums all the tracks that means all the data is getting towards me within nanoseconds from the data center right i am getting the data from the server to the client within nanoseconds that is the transfer rate of the big data so that is called velocity transfer rate of data which is generating at an alarming rate and the fourth one is called value that means we have to bring valuable data for our client if we are not going to provide or get the valuable data he is not going to use the services because we do have a huge data center and after that we are collecting the data by the help of data mining algorithm data filtration data sorting shuffling a lot number of algorithms are working to make the data valuable purify once we purify the data then after that we are going to get the valuable data i will tell you by the help of an example just suppose that i go on facebook and i search for my friend uh, like uh, my friend whose name is uh, david again okay and the uh, facebook shows me the output of a guy whose whose name is mike so i will get a little bit shocked that i have searched for david and it is giving me the output mike so i'm not going to use the service because i'm not getting the not getting the valuable data so that means i want the data which i search i want the valuable data if i'm not going to i'm just not getting the valuable data i'm not going to use the services so that is called value in big data and the first one is called veracity veracity as in uncertainty and inconsistency in the data that means data is having fluctuations that means data can be uncertain i cannot predict that in future my, my data is around 200 gb or 400 gb it is not it is unpredictable let's suppose that we do watch ipl right so when uh, there is a match of ipl they told us the competitor told us or the guy from the interview and all part they said that uh, go for hashtag ipl hashtag ipl so that means they are generating the data by the help of hashtags on social media so that means at that time we do have a huge bulk data on that topic and now we cannot now ipl is not in the boom so if you just go for hashtag ipl it will show you the older post right because that topic is not in trending so that means at that time the data is generated in petabytes and database and nowadays regarding that same topic ipl the data will be around gbs so that is fluctuations in big data uncertainties i cannot predict that how much my data is going to be in future but i have to be get it prepared whatever my data will be around gb or petabyte i have need a technology to store and process that amount of data for future as less present and past so that is these are the five v's of big data that is that is volume variety velocity value and veracity and there are so many v's which is going to be in future so we have to just get ready for the future that is these are the five v's of big data now next that is big data as an opportunity what are the opportunities we can get while learning big data so basically uh, just give me a second ah uh, yeah here it is so uh, the opportunities that is number one section in big data is called administration in administration you are going to learn how to work on automatic installation or manual installation how to use uh, manual installation how to use automatic installation like cloud era hotel works these are cdh automatic installation and if it is talk about manual installation how to set up our own clusters how to make the whole clusters providing securities and carburetor ssh configuration a lot number of stuff we are going to learn in hadoop admin and the second section is called hadoop development you have already heard about hadoop developers so in hadoop development basically how big data is stored in new kind of technology and after that how to process the data these are the things you are going to learn in development part and the third section is called data analytics which is called big data hadoop analyst okay these are the guys who represent our data by the help of tableau r programming and you can use spark you can go over python or uh, you can go for kibana you can go for sas a lot number of technologies are there which is used for representing our data set so this is the third section which is called analytics and the fourth section of big data which is called future of big data which is done by the help of python which is data science artificial intelligence machine learning and neural networks okay so these are the opportunities you are going to learn in big data okay so and if i just talk about again the pay scale the highest paid job nowadays 7 lakh for a fresher and it is going to give you a big amount of bucks 
So that is the opportunity in big data. Now next is IBM Big Data Analytics. How IBM have played a role in big data? So uh, as uh, if I just talk about the India, we do have these kind of uh, meters which are being installed on our homes. And every, by the end of every month, there's a guy from the registered office came with having a notepad and a pen. Okay, then after that, he do write our readings and go back to his office after writing all the reading of all the area, going back again to the office. Then after that, he wrote on their Excel sheets. Then after that, uploading on the servers. Then after that, they give us the print and shows us the billing amount that we have to pay. If I just talk about the whole this process, the data is collected in one month. Okay, and if I just talk about the new change, that change is smart meter. IBM have launched a smart meter, which is an IoT product. Okay, they are doing this. They are just, I'm sorry, they are just doing the same stuff within 15 minutes. So how they are using smart meter for collecting our data within 15 minutes, processing the data, analyzing the data, and giving us the output within 15 minutes. They are just using a technology which is called Hadoop. They are using a big data and Hadoop for storage of big data and for analyzing the big data. They are using Apache Hadoop. And uh, if I just talk about the next thing, that is problems with encouraging opportunity. What are the problems that we have faced? Number first problem, data generated is so big. That means storing exponentially going huge data set. So number one, these are the prediction that is around 96% accurate, 95 to 96% accurate. And these are data generated in past year is more than previous history in total that means the data that is going to be generated next year is more than previous history in total so that is big data and the second prediction by the end of 2020 the data will be grow to 44 zettabytes approximately it is 4.5 4.4 till 2018 and 19 and 20 it will be around 44 zettabytes 10 times more and the third prediction which is by the end of 2020 Approximately 1.7 MB of new information will be created every second for every person. That means you are going to generate 1.7 MB of new information automatically in 2020. And for 1.7 is a big data and you need a new technology. We cannot store that amount of data in RDB image. Okay, so that is a big data. As you can see the image as well, we are, that is the image says that we do have an uh, elephant and we are pushing it in a refrigerator, which is called RDBMS, refrigerator as in RDBMS and elephant as in big data. So we cannot do it. So that is the reason I need a new technology. So next is problem number two, which is processing data having complex structure. Now data is having complexity. It can be structured data, it can be semi-structured data, or it can be unstructured data. For storing and processing, we are using RDBMS for structured and for semi-structured and unstructured, I need a new technology because I have my data is big and I want the things to be done within nanoseconds. Next one is processing data faster. How the processing is faster in nowadays? I will tell you by the help of an example. Just suppose that uh, I, I do have a guy whose name whose name is uh, Malan. Okay, I have given him a task, Malan. What you have to do is. I'm giving you a novel. You have to tell me that how many times a Shakespeare word came in this novel. Okay, then after that, Malan just told me that, okay, and then I'll do that for you. Okay, so he took the novel and the book is around 500 to 600 pages. And I have given him the test that you have to tell me that how many number of times Malan came in this novel. Okay, so he has started reading the novel from the first page, three times, seven, second page, four times, fifth page, so one keeps on. Then he gave me the output that is nothing. I have done the work for you in nine hours, and the Shakespeare word came in 147 times. Okay, so here Malan is working as a single unit, single input, single output. Now, if I just talk about the new architecture, new architecture that is being off by new technology, which is called parallel distribution algorithm. So now I here on the next hand, I do have a team of five members. And I told them that you have to, I distributed the same novel to these five guys. And after that, I have told them that uh, I'm giving you this novel. This novel contains 10 chapters. So you have to divide your chapters in the form of two and two chapters, starting first chapter, starting two chapters to the first guy, then two to four, second guy, and four to six, third guy, six to eight, fourth guy, and eight to 10, fifth guy. So I've given the same novel and I have distributed the data. I told them distribute the data. That means you, once they have distributed the data, 
Then after that, I've told them that now you have to tell me the number of times Shakespeare word came in your start in your chapters in two chapters respectively. So that means I've given them the data. They have distributed the data. Then after that, they are going to do a parallel processing. Now they are going to tell me the number of times Shakespeare word came in that novel on their own sections. So they came and uh, they just started calculating the number of times Shakespeare word came. Then after that, they give us the output and then I do consider that average time is around one hour. So after one hour, they give us the output that A told me that it is around 23 times for me. Then B is 29 times, then 32, 65 and 41. So I aggregated the output that is being, that is being given by these five guys in one hour. Okay. So I aggregate the output and the output said that is around 149 times. Okay. So that means the old single unit is working in nine hours okay and giving the output 147 times okay and if i just talk about this technique this technique is called master slave architecture master is me i'm the manager and these are all my slaves like slaves and employees i have given him the task once they have I, when, once i have given them the task they are going to distribute the task then after that they are going to process the task okay parallelly once the processing has been done, they are going to give us give me the output and I will merge them. I will aggregate them and then send it to the client. So here I'm doing the same work in one hour. And if I just talk about the old one that he and that guy is doing in nine hours and they are doing the same work in one hour. Normal, normal. This is a normal funda that if we divide our tasks to the multiple guys, the work will going to be done in a effective manner and in a better manner and this less in less time so that is the reason which is called master slave architecture in new technology that's how processing is faster in hadoop so that is all we have learned for big data now next one is hadoop so what is hadoop how hadoop is a solution remember that big data is a different thing big data is basically the evolution of data and next one is hadoop as a solution how hadoop is a solution for all the problems that we have faced petabytes jettabytes of our data and what are the algorithms they are working so that is hadoop so how hadoop is going to process the data within seconds just give me a second yeah so so let's continue the session with um, hadoop as a solution how Hadoop is a solution for all the things. I will tell you the deep manner as well, how there's a lot of algorithms which are working together. Okay, so uh, Hadoop. So basically Hadoop is a framework. You can call it a technology. Okay, so basically it is a framework that allows us to store and process big data. It is a technology which is used for storing and processing big data by the help of an algorithm, which is called this which is called this parallel and distributed fashion. Parallel distributed fashion means divide the data parallelly. Once the data have been divided, then process the data parallelly. This is called parallel and distributed fashion. I have told you by the help of master slave architecture. Now, if I just talk about Hadoop, there are two main components of Hadoop that is called SDFS and MapReduce. SDFS stands for Hadoop distributed file system that is used for storage of big data. That means all our data will be going to store in Hadoop distributed file system. It is a file system which is launched by Hadoop. And before that, we do have Google file system, NTFS file system. Now we do have SGFS, Hadoop distributed file system. So make sure that you must know that SGFS is used only for the storage part. That means all of our data is going to be stored in a storage device, which is called SGFS. It is used to store any kind of data across the cluster. I will tell you what is cluster. And once the data have been stored, we are going to process the data by the help of uh, framework of Hadoop, which is called MapReduce. That is the main component. No need to worry at all. See that uh, MapReduce is only built up for the Java developers. The Hadoop have options for non-Java, for basically for SQL guys who do have a knowledge of SQL, they want to process the data. Now Hadoop came with a solution, which is called Hive. Hive do provide you the same functionality of SQL as well as the upgraded feature of SQL, which is called in Hive, which is called internal table, external table, static partitioning, dynamic partitioning, bucketing, UDF, scripts. A lot number of things are there. By the help of this, you can process the data within seconds by the help of Hive. And uh, next one is Pig. 
Pig is also there, Flume is also there, Scoop is also there, and um, Uzi is there, Zookeeper is there, as well as Apache Spark is there, Edgebase is there, a lot of Elasticsearch is there, a lot number of technologies are there for all the developers who are from IT background or non-IT background. You can process the data by Python as well. So that is a change. But the major components is LGFS and MapReduce because Hadoop is totally based on a uh, uh, system which is operating system which is called Linux. And Hadoop only knows a language which is called Java because Hadoop is totally built on top of Java. Okay. So not, no need to worry at all that it is built on Java. So must, we must have a knowledge of Java. That is not mandatory because Hadoop have a thing which is called YAN. YAN is a compiler. Okay, which converts any programming language in Java. Okay, we just have to write our own codes in our own technology. Then after that, all the code will be converted in Java by the help of YAN. I will tell you after the uh, next session that what is YAN, what are the new features that has been provided by YAN. Okay, so remember the thing, the main components are SDFS and MapReduce. SDFS for storage, once the data have been stored in distributed file system, then after that, we are going to process the data by using MapReduce, which is the uh, first ecosystem of Hadoop. So next one, no, uh, number first ecosystem for storage that is called Hadoop distributed file system, which is SDFS. So how data is stored in Hadoop distributed file system? SDFS has basically two main component that is name node. You can see here name node and which is basically a end server. And these are my data nodes. Okay, basically when uh, I have told you that when manager and employee mean, meet, they call as a team. Now here cluster means, I have told you about the cluster, here cluster means when name node and data node interact together, that is called cluster. Name node is called manager, here name node is a manager and plays as in data node. So that is name node and data node. Okay, the main objective of name node is to generate metadata. And we do know that metadata is data about data, the data which tells the information about the data so that is called metadata, like index page of our books, which refers us the topic that or this topic is going to be on page number nine, this topic 12, that is metadata, that is the index page, right? That name, so remember the thing, name node is the main node that contains metadata about the data stored. So name node is called manager, okay? And the main objective of manager of all, you can call it name node, is to distribute the data to the employee, distribute the tasks to the employee. That that is done by the help of name node. So name node is the main node that is called master. We generate metadata about the data store. The data we are going to store in uh, Hadoop is going to be generated by the, it is going to be calculated by the help of name node. And data is stored on data nodes. Data nodes are basically commodity hardware like laptops and servers, which is in a distributed environment. Okay, so that is name node and data node. Remember the thing, the actual data will be stored in data nodes, not in name node. Name node is just going to generate metadata. The data that we are going to store in data nodes will be generated by the help of metadata. And the metadata is in the format of logs. Okay. And that is generated by the help of name node. Now, so if I just talk about the problem number one, which is storing exponentially going huge data set. Okay. SDFS is basically storage unit of Hadoop. I will tell you a lot number of algorithms which are working together with uh, Hadoop. Okay. In the today's session, I'm just giving you the overview so that you can interact the general discussion that how this works, this works. I will tell you the blocks, replication, secondary name node, uh, backup, and a lot number of signals, heartbeat mechanism, algorithms, which are uh, handshaking algorithms, which are working on Hadoop after some session. Okay. So SDFS, which is storage unit of Hadoop, it is distributed file system. Okay. I will tell you how, what is distributed file system. Okay. Divide data into smaller chunks, chunks as in blocks. Okay across the cluster and these blocks are scalable in Hadoop. In Hadoop came with two versions, which is Hadoop 1 and Hadoop 2. And we do have Hadoop 3, which is ongoing on beta. They have launched, okay, but the industries are not using nowadays, but they are going to switch into Hadoop 3. And Hadoop 3 is going to be on Windows as well. <coughs> so basically uh, that is SDFL, that is storage unit of Hadoop. Okay, and storing the second problem, is storing unstructured data. Basically, Hadoop SDF is a big hard disk. Okay, on that hard disk, we have installed Hadoop. Okay, and if I just talk about uh, storing unstructured data, we can store any kind of data on our hard disk. Is it right? So basically, SDFS is used to store any kind of data, be it structured, semi-structured, or unstructured. 
and follows warm warm means write once read many we have to store the data once and after that we can read the data n number of times and no schema validation is done while dumping data we don't have to provide schema for storing the data that is schema less okay and if it is talk about the rdb mess we need to provide the schema first then after that we are going to store the data and if i just talk about hard disk hard disk doesn't need schema we just need to do copy and paste and i will also tell you that how coding is so easy in hadoop you hadoop is just like english language it is just like english language i will show you the practical implementation as well that's what is the easy way to do coding we must have knowledge of only linux or basic sql and if you do have a knowledge of little bit java that will be preferable so that is showing unstructured data in hadoop distributed file system now third one is processing data faster how processing is done in a faster manner in hadoop i have told you that parallel processing which is if a single guy is doing the work it is taking 4 hours and the same task is distributed to four guys they are going to do the same work in one hour that is called master slave architecture architecture master and these are my slaves that's how processing is done in a faster manner in hadoop and next one is hadoop ecosystem these are the technologies or frameworks you are going to learn uh, in hadoop development so i have told you about sdfs which is distributed file system and over that there is a layer of yarn which is a compiler okay which converts all programming language in java because hadoop can only understand the programming language which is called java and here we do have some technologies like we have already heard about map reduce for java developers and for sql developers we do have hive and if they want to work on machine learning libraries and uh, real time data sets we do have apache spark okay and uh, the non it guys can work on pig okay scripting language is pig is a scripting language for all the guys from uh, non it it and pig can process the same data uh, whether it is structured semi structured or unstructured with in time com uh, within time complexity because if we are writing a code of 500 lines in um, map reduce in java the same work pick can learn within 10 to 15 lines so that is the best part for pick and it can it is just like english language okay and we do have no sql database like hbase cassandra mongodb and zookeeper and uh, zookeeper and ambari for the guys who is into management and coordination the data flow and uzi for job scheduling and solar and lucene like you have already heard about elastic search okay kafka and storm for managing the data flow by the help of a messaging system which is used by the help of kafka and spark for in memory data flow engine okay and we do have flume and scoop flume is used for uh, storing real time data in hadoop distributed file system and the type of data is unstructured and semi structured and we do have scoop which is used for transferring data from old technologies to new technologies that is rdbms to hadoop and hadoop to rdbms so there is a lot number of things new technologies you are going to learn all then after that you can took your own that i'm going to process the technology process my data by the help of this technology this technology so it totally depends on you and but all the thing is save the time that's all in hadoop so there is again the introduction of hadoop hive peg spark hbase as you are going to learn each and every one each and every framework uh, during your training session so uh, that's all in the training sessions from my end in the theoretical part i'm done with the theoretical part for this session that what is so till here to have you have understand what is data what are the different type of data what are what is rdbms what are the failures that rdbms do have now what are the type of data i do have now in today's industry and what are the old technologies what is the maximum limit of storing the data in old technology and what is the change now is and what is the size of the data nowadays which is generated by the help of big data and how there are a lot number of technologies are in boom of hadoop ecosystems and how hadoop came in picture then a lot number of thing and you're going to learn a lot from my and i'm just going to share my knowledge in big data and hadoop okay now i'm going to continue my session by the help of practical implementation for all the guys who are having a concern that how hadoop means a big technology or big number of coding stuff but it is not like that i'll just code some normal code normal english language then after that it will show you how processing is fast in hadoop so let me minimize it i'm using a os a windows i'm using a basically linux over there ubuntu okay then after that i'm using a client terminal which is called putty okay let me open it putty it is this the client terminal where i'm just going to do my coding stuff in the practical implementation over here i will tell you how 
big data is stored in Hadoop distributed file system by the help of normal two queries. Okay, and once the data have been stored, I will tell you how to process that big data by the help of our, I'm using the first ecosystem of Hadoop, which is called MapReduce. Okay, and uh, I have told you that if you have to tell me that Shakespeare word came in that novel, single word, you are taking approximately nine hours. Now my second thing is, I want to know how many times all word came in that novel is am are basically word count of all the number of words in that novel so if i just talk about a guy it will take years and if i just talk about hadoop hadoop is doing the same work in three seconds i want a how many times that a word came in that novel space double inverted commas comma then out julius caesar off on the all the words i want all the words to be calculated and the perfect output so that's all i'm going to show you the practical implementation so just let me just maximize my screen so that it is going to be visible uh, increasing my font size okay that is getting this good So uh, there's a code which is called start-all.sh, which is used for starting all the services of Hadoop. Name node, data node, secondary name node, resource manager, a lot number of services of Hadoop is getting started by the help of a code, which is called start-all.sh. It is a basic query. Okay. Yeah, so all the services of Hadoop is started by the help of start hyphen all dot sh. If you want to stop the all the services of Hadoop, you just have to type stop hyphen all dot sh. All the services will be stopped. I do have using an operating system which is called Linux, Ubuntu. And in Ubuntu, I have already configured my first part of big data, which is called admin. I've already done with the installation of Hadoop, providing securities, configuration, network setup, cluster management, installation of Hadoop and Java, a lot more of things I've already done. So I'm just showing the practical implementation, how data is stored in Hadoop. Okay, so that is the code for stopping all the services of Hadoop. And next one is, uh, let me clear it. Now checking that running services, what are the running services of Hadoop? So these are resource manager, data node, JPS, secondary name node, node manager, name node. So these all are the running services of Hadoop. So uh, remember the thing, I'm using three operating system, which is Windows. And over Windows, I have used Linux because Hadoop can only understand Linux till two uh, to to 2x version. Okay, and uh, if I just talk about once the Linux have been installed, I have installed Hadoop over my Linux. So I do have three OS. Not Hadoop is not an OS. I know that. Okay, I'm just differentiating it. Like we do have Windows, we do have uh, Linux, and over Linux we do have Hadoop framework. So we do have three kind of sources. Okay, three platforms basically. Now I'll, I'm just going to, I want to create a folder in Hadoop, not in Linux. I'm going to create a folder in Hadoop. So how to create a folder in Hadoop? So I'm using this code, Hadoop space FS space hyphen MKDIR, make directory. I'm creating, and Hadoop starts with power slash, which is called root of uh, Hadoop. So I'm just going to uh, create a folder by the name, uh, just give me a second. Okay, there we go. So I want to create a folder which is called Sunday data. Okay, I want to create a folder Sunday data or Sunday demo. Okay, when I hit enter, that is the only code. How do space fs which is called file system and space hyphen mkdir for creating a folder mkdir and the name of the folder and location of the folder which is root. Okay, just give me a second. I'm just going to show you the web browser of Hadoop. When you are going to be done with the installation part of Hadoop, there is a web UI of Hadoop, and the port number is 50070. When I go to the browser file system, and I told you about the power slash, which is root. Okay, so I have created a folder, which is Sunday demo. You can see that that is D as in directory, owner, super owner, and uh, super groups, then after the timings and all, Sunday demo is created over here. I can also go for list. 
how do web page that is file system space hyphen ls i want to go on root when i hit enter it will show me all the folders which i have created in hadoop so here we do have a lot number of data i have already done so we do have send a demo you can see over here by the help of normal linux query okay i just entered over here the hadoop file system then that is done so i have created a folder okay and now i am on windows because i want to create a file to know that number of counts we basically what are the number of counts uh, so basically i'm creating a file like suppose that okay i am creating kasha data okay let me hit enter then after that i'm going for a celebrity like mark and uh, zuckerberg Wikipedia. And I hit enter. So I want. I'm just going for Control A. I'm pasting all the data in this file. Okay. Now here is the file. I want to know basically in this file that how many time width came, VIP came, time person, year. Zuckerberg, Zuckerberg dot, Mark Zuckerberg, Facebook, everything. I want to know how many times every word is came in this novel and uh, this document. I want to know every words, every word in this document. Hadoop can do the same task within maximum five seconds. So I'm just saving this file. File is saved, which is Kasha data. There's a content in this file. Now I'm using a protocol, which is called file transfer protocol, because my file is in windows now i want to transform my file to linux so i'm using Linux cp which is our file transfer protocol which transfers file from one operating system to another operating system and the location of my data which is in windows my file is in kasha data on desktop and i want to transfer in linux in opt folder i will also tell you how to configure putty and Linux cp you can use filezilla xshell a lot of more tools are there so now my file has been transferred in Linux. So I'll go for CD OPT. Now go for LS. I can see the data, which is Kasha data. Just give me a second. Here it is. J J K. Here it is. Kasha data dot txt. Now I can also go for cat Kasha data dot txt. It will show me the all the content in that file. Right now so now next is i want to transfer my data from linux to hadoop so that is a simple code hadoop space fs then space hyphen copy from local <coughs> and the location is opt and kasha data.txt and i want to uh, transfer my data in the folder that i created that is sunday data that is the code normal english kind of stuff <coughs> sorry when I hit enter, my data will be transferred in the folder Sunday data. Again, I go to the web browser and browsing is JPS. I'm reloading it. Sunday demo. Okay, just give me a second. Uh, I have to transfer the name of the folder is Sunday demo. I mismatched it, I guess. I just forgot the name. So it is Sunday demo. Okay, now my file is transferred. I'll reload it. Now I can see that is kasha data is in the folder sunday demo okay and now that's how data is stored in hadoop i'll also show you some a lot number of uh, things you can do how to delete the folder delete the file how to change that application a lot number of stuff you are going to learn from my end during your training sessions so that's only two lines i've created a folder then after that i'm just using copy from local for transferring my data or storing my data in hadoop now my data is stored in hadoop now i want to process the data right so for processing i'm using basically map reduce okay so basically if i just talk about i'm good i'm using a tool which is called eclipse for java developers <coughs> let it open it took around 30 seconds
so uh, okay i'll show you something okay so this is the code that i have written in java i'll explain this code during your training sessions of MapReduce. so basically i have write down some code i will explain these classes mapper class producer class and driver class during your training sessions of MapReduce. okay so in this uh, code okay i have created uh, a package which is uh, my package in the source i've created my package which is the name of my package in java and i have mentioned three classes okay mapper class and reducer class and driver class which is world count the name of my driver class is world count because driver class is used for execution i will tell you what is the explanation of these classes so we do have mapper class reducer class and driver class so my this is my code for deploying on the data set i will explain the code in your training session no need to worry at all so just i'll go for this uh, export i write it some code in java and I want to do it extract, uh, sorry, uh, make it in a jar. Okay, I'll go for this, like uh, this is the name I want to create on the desktop. Kasha code and uh, desktop next, next. What are the libraries, Hadoop common, Hadoop mapper client code we have to add for understanding Java that we are working on Hadoop now. So that is my code part. Now I have created a file, which is my jar file. Now I want to deploy my jar file in Hadoop. So I have to transfer it again from Windows to Linux by the help of this tool, WinSCP. Now my code have been transferred because my data is in Hadoop. So again, I'll go for LS. It will, uh, that is the window. Okay, so that is the name of the code is Kasha code. You okay, can also see here, there will be a code. Uh, that is Kasha code.jar. So next is just give me a second. So, uh, yes. so now I will show you how processing is done in Hadoop. How you can deploy that code which I rated in uh, which I just write it in Java by using MapReduce. Okay, now I will deploy the code over here. So that the code execution is Hadoop space jar because I'm executing a jar file and the location of my uh, sorry jar file which is opt and kasha code.jar and in this jar file i have made a package which is my package dot driver class name word count i've created a class which is called word count w capital and c capital c capital and the location of my data which is sunday demo forward slash the name of the file that i have created sunday demo is kasha data because i want to process Boom, uh, data processing on this data set which is kasha data.txt and i want to create a folder which is output in the same directory sunday demo i want to create a folder that automatically is going to be created when i execute this code output so that means all my data will be stored in sunday demo output folder this folder will be automatically generated okay that is the single code i have to just execute this hadoop space jar and space location of my jar file and space uh, the package i have created in that jar file which is my package dot name of my driver class because driver class is used for the uh, running the job configuration and executing the program and this is my location for my data in sjps where i have created the folder earlier sunday demo and in that folder i have created a file which is kasha data.txt and I want that the process output will be stored in Sunday demo with a folder which is called output. So when I hit enter, see the processing speed of Hadoop. When I hit enter, the processing start. It will take up like one second, two second, and three second. Work done. All the processing is done within approximately three seconds. So that is the first point of learning new technologies. So again, I go for back. Again, I'll reload it. Then we do have we can see a folder which is output. I've told you that the folder will be automatically generated. So when you do the processing part, Hadoop will show you two part two files, which is success, which is basically a log file which says that your transaction is done, your uh, work is done, and that another file which is called part hyphen five times zero. Basically, that is our process output. So I can see the process output by using a code which is Hadoop FS space 
hyphen cat then space then location of my file which is sunday demo i'll just copy this and paste it over here then forward slash name of the file process output which is part this is my process output file part hyphen five times zero two three four five when i hit enter you can see your process output within seconds so that is the processing speed of hadoop it will show you the all the number of times all word came in that data very six times and uh, up 10 times up from our university this time and that is two 225 times within three seconds work done d 366 times it is showing me the process output within seconds so how this is done i can also calculate it that how many uh, what is the top trending word in this wikipedia what are my negative words what i want for everything can be done so that is the power of hadoop that's how the processing is done in Hadoop within a second. So that's all from today from my end. I hope that you do like this uh, session, which is provided by me. Again, my name is Aman Sani, and I do really appreciate your time and patience. And thank you so much for taking the session and stay connected. I'll see you, I'll see you over the next session, with, where I'm just going to show you the next. Uh, starting from the deep learning of theoretical part then after that what are the algorithms that are, we do have and then after that we are going to start our training session with big data and hadoop so that's all from my end see you soon thank you so much peace bye